I want to bring in uh, from the Bonson Group, their managing director, David Bonson. And, and first, of course, I've got to ask you, what the heck has gone on with crude oil? I mean, yesterday it fell through a trap door, David. Yeah, there's uh, been a lot of volatility around crude lately, and it's tended to go to the low 80s and back up into the 90s a couple times last few weeks. Interestingly, Charles is doing that with natural gas still at very high levels. There's been quite a divergence between crude and natty gas. And in fact, you've seen uh, crude further go into backwardation. And so the curve itself is pricing something very different. My view is that there's a couple event driven things that could push it way higher. And I hope that doesn't happen. But uh, if God forbid this administration does go forward with an Iran deal, let Iran put a lot more crude on the market that could push prices up. Um, uh, it be, or excuse me, if that right. deal uh, gets done, it could push it lower. If it, it falls apart and they're pricing that in, it could push it up. Okay. I said it backwards. But um, the other piece is the Saudi-China discussion. I think there's a lot of belief that people are plotting behind U.S. backs uh, to kind of take matters in their own hands on world oil supply. Meanwhile, I'm over here kicking and screaming that we take our matters into our own hands. And I think other people are following the advice. I wish we would follow it for ourselves. You know, to that point, uh, in the U.K., of course, they're doing all kinds of things with price caps. But on the other end of that, they just announced that they're going to lift the fracking ban. And I think it's a, a great message uh, to everyone, particularly the Davos crowd, right, that's telling us, hey, we don't need fracking and do this, do that. They can afford it. But the fact of the matter is uh, we need to be pushing back against this notion that fossil fuels are bad for us, shouldn't we? Well, yes, but there's two things when you talk about fracking. First of all, uh, we need these fossil fuels uh, so that people don't freeze to death and people don't starve to death. We need fossil fuels to meet basic human needs, whether they're, as you call them, Davos folks or anybody else. Nobody is able to live without the reality of energy, and our energy production relies on it. But then when we talk about transporting these things around, the environmental movement has really lost it because there is a safer way to do so. And they oppose that, too. Yeah. The building of new pipelines. So they want they would rather put it on trucks and rail than use pipeline to transport our energy needs. Uh, there's a lot of things wrong with contemporary energy policy. Hey, before I let you go, David, uh, I've got to ask you about dividend stocks right now. Uh, this is really amazing. About 10 percent, only 10 percent of stocks in the S&P 500 have a higher yield than a 10 year Treasury yield. Yeah. I mean, when you take into account risk and things like that, does it even make sense to seek yield now from equities? Well, it makes sense to seek uh, yield from those 10 percent of equities <laughs> that are paying higher than a 10 year. Um, and, and I'll add to it because I don't even want to own the 10 percent that is paying more than a 10 year. You have to have a growing dividend because that shows you confidence in a company's future projection. We don't look backwards. You look forwards. And, you know, I love Jim, your, your prior guest. He's really smart, has a lot of great market commentary. But I don't agree that big tech has to lead the next reign forward. That's not the historical precedent that what led the past decade leads in the next decade. It's never happened. Right. I don't think big tech will be the savior of this market. I think good value dividend growth will be. And there's some high yielding companies right now that can pay you more than a 10 year and a heck of a lot more than the S&P's yield. I got 10 seconds. Can you share one name with us? 10 seconds, Simon Property, 7% yield. That yield is not going to go away. They're collecting rent. They own the best assets. You got huge real property underlying it. Simon Property Group, SPG, 7% dividend. You know, I Charles. love what they've done during the pandemic when they actually started to buy some yeah. of these stores to your name on the cheap. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And by the way, hard assets coming back in favor. David, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir.